Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers Eleven. Hope you're well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you may do it many time. We put new content on. As always, our channel. This video is provided by our uh, channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them in out in the description below for your t-shirts, shirts, polo tops. They do the lot, um, and they're designed to be worn untucked. So you know, for me. I like to wear my shirts untucked, so but I'm quite short, and uh, it's a bit annoying. But these are perfectly designed, so it's all good. Check them out. Um, today's guest, it's not. It, we haven't put a mirror in there, you know. It, it's it's another Russ. <laughs> it's another Russ. I know you. People blinked and they thought I put myself on twice, but um, it's it's Russ. It's very early today. Um, it's probably the earliest time we've probably done a My Hammers Eleven, but there's a reason for it because Russ is in Hong Kong at the moment. Um, so uh, that's that's why. That's why. How are we doing, Russ? How are you, man? Yeah, from one rust to another, I'm good, thanks. Um, obviously, apologies for having to get you up so early with the time difference and whatnot. It's about 5 p.m. here, so. But don't, yeah, things are going well. Yeah, don't be silly. I've got an eight-year-old daughter, so I'm, I'm up at... I'm up at six o'clock every day. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so don't, yeah, so don't get used to that. For those of you who don't know, Russ is um a uh, is a rugby player. Uh, he played at Hong Kong, um, plays in Hong Kong, and he's also part of the Hong Kong uh, Sevens team as well, uh, which is awesome. And uh, you know, as a former rugby player myself, you know, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I used to play sevens. You don't, I, I don't look it, <laughs> but I did. Honestly, I did. I used to um. I used to play. Uh, used to play sevens, and um, used to play. I used to be uh, full back. Then I thought I played all over the backs, to be honest, because I was quite quick, deceptively quick. You know. Oh, so, awesome. um, yeah, so this is go. what to... this is me looking into the future, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hope. Well, your hair is far better than mine. I'll be honest, Russ. To be honest, but uh, what's the weather like out there at the moment in Hong Kong? Um, it's usually well. It's usually very, very humid. Um, mm warm and it's starting to cool down mind you it doesn't get any lower than probably 16 17 degrees in winter time so it stays pretty warm um so yeah i can't complain t-shirt shorts at the moment maybe oh. might put a jumper on come december or just <laughs> but, for yeah it's lovely yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> literally yeah it's lovely and and how is it all with obviously we're just entering a new lockdown here in the in england for example what's it like in hong kong at the moment yeah we've uh, well with sars that came in i think of course must have been yeah. 2004 or something like that we were pretty prepared for i guess another pandemic mm. as soon as there was one or two cases it was everyone has to wear masks um we still are only allowed to go out in groups of six um yeah. as a max when you sit down for dinner and whatnot luckily they said on pitches you're allowed up to 33 on a pitch so they've allowed uh, their professional football league and obviously our rugby league to go ahead mm -hmm. here in hong kong um but yeah everyone's just really really diligent about it um when it's stay indoors pe most people stay indoors beaches are closed mm -hmm. um but yeah we're getting by i think we're slowly getting over the the hump a bit over yeah. it i think we've got like a travel bubble with singapore at some point um just to start the economy back up again and tourism course, and yeah. whatnot but we're we're living we're making we're making yeah. do and you're right i said obviously with with sars and stuff it just mean yeah you said you had that sort of benchmarks you know you, you had that sort of setup so it was like it was a a, a similar thing when when kobe came in yeah we're, we're here in the uk it's like what you know it's like from like one day on it's like you know what, what's going on here you know yeah there was there was me back in february or march talking oh yeah we'll be off for two weeks we'll be back be back no worries and it's like you know it's eight months later oh, and you're sure. still, i know it's absolutely crazy man but um and it's good at least you know at least there's you know you said the the, the hong kong government are letting you know sort of the the team sports go on obviously here in the uk obviously we've got the premier league still going and stuff like that but for you guys it's uh really and it's lucky that you know obviously when, you, when you're playing your sevens because obviously you can only go out in groups of six so right, exactly like... yeah <laughs> But you was meant Pretend to be playing. Got... You was meant to be playing in the in the sort of Olympics qualifying thing, weren't you? Soon for the seven. Yeah, so we had a we had an Olympic qualifier last year that we fell just short on uh, for the Asian qualifications, but mm. we got sent to a repercharge for coming second. So we were going to head to where was it? I think it was. Oh, I forget where it was, but we were supposed mm. to go in June to play like Ireland, Samoa, and whatnot to try and be that I think sixteenth team yeah um so that's all been postponed so we've been told 
you know, stay put, stay fit, because whenever the borders open up again, we could be off to play in another tournament. Yeah. So we're just staying at the ready. Good, 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 good. And and, and in terms of obviously your and in terms of sort of the, the league, you know, obviously you're, that's starting. You said to mention before we started that started this week. So all looking good already for the yeah, season well, starting. It's, it's uh it's a 15s league so yeah so it's bodies getting back used to playing 15s i've gone from tackling lads who are my size to tackling lads who are probably four times the size that i am which isn't as fun but <laughs> to be honest any sort of competitive sport any sort of or like running around just to doing anything really just looking yeah. forward to getting back to it yeah and i mean with sevens you know it's just as you said it's like you know, once once they've broken the line, you just let them go, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I used to do. Oh yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah, I'm not gonna catch you up. We'll just um, try and but, score the next one. Yeah, yeah. We'll just yeah, we'll just get back and ready for kickoff. But uh, no, it's uh no, it's it's totally different. But as you said it's great that at least you you've got some competitive sport going because it just gets gets your juices going, doesn't it? Just in case oh, for sure. It's all ready to go, and then you can go and do repage and, and and get that Olympic place, which would be absolutely incredible, man. Um Ooh, and gosh, yeah. and obviously, you know, we see the shirt. We see the shirt you're wearing. Yeah. Um, that's very good. Uh, it just shows that West Ham, you know, West Ham, they ship all over the world. Um, oh, it's like, honestly, in Hong Kong, it's like finding a four leaf clover about. <laughs> you're like, yeah, well, because, well, growing up in Hong Kong, it's always been top four. So yeah. when me growing up, it was Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, uh, Man U at the time. Um, so you wouldn't really get West Ham on the telly and whatnot. And growing up, no one really supported that when I was at school. Yeah. Um, so the odd time you do see a bloke in a West Ham jersey, you give him a nod and give him an irons, and it's cool. <laughs> we've been so, as I said, we've been socially distancing for years because that's what we say. We don't shake hands as fans. It's like, yeah. irons, irons, come your eyes. That's it, and that's it. Yeah. That's all you need to know. And you've 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 had about a twenty minute conversation by saying that because oh, you don't sure. understand that. So why are you a West Ham fan, Russ? Then, given all the top right, four so, and stuff like that. Yeah. So my so my dad grew up in the UK and he's English and. He grew up being a West Ham fan, grew up watching the likes of, you know, Sir Trevor Booking, Sir Bobby Moore. And um, he then married my mum, who's from Hong Kong, and we moved here. And he kind of let me find out for myself if I wanted to be a West Ham fan. He didn't really push it upon me. Um, growing up, it was always in Hong Kong. It was the David Beckham show. He was massive in China. Yeah. So I put my hands up. I was a massive Beckham fan. I liked uh, the only football really I watched was Man U, to be honest um but there was sort of a turn when i think i must have been about eight or nine they started playing the equivalent of like match of the day uh mm. in hong kong on like sunday mornings because of the time difference yeah and we'd all wake up at seven in the morning and rush to dad's room and he'd put it on but the only difference was unlike gary lineker this guy would tell you the result before the game starts. So we'd have to like mute, we'd mute the telly because he'd be like, oh, if you're a West Ham fan, look away now. And you're like, right. So we'd always have to mute it beforehand. So that's that's when I started to see my dad, you know, celebrating or getting pretty pissed off at the telly yeah. on most occasions. Um, and from that point forward, I think it became like religious for us every Sunday, wake up every Sunday morning to watch that um long story short at what at one point we got relegated and dad was like well that's it there's not going to be west ham in the premier league next year so mm. sunday mornings basically off so yeah. that, i think that, that was quite painful for us to for me and my older brother my little middle brother supports liverpool so i mean that's we ignore him uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah that's when i i think for the first time i was like like shit that's that feels pretty shit yeah. So I think then I kind of knew I was, it's, it's, it's West Ham, it always will be. Yeah. Um, and then I got given a DVD, I think it was like West Ham's Greatest Goals. Um, I think it must have been like 2004. Um, and that was like the first time that I really sat, like studied and sat down and watched mm. all, all the footage, all the highlights and learned the history and asked my dad about the players that he watched. And it kind of blossomed from there, really. Brilliant. Love it. I love it. It's yeah. such a it's such a unique story. That's why I thought when when, when we sort of started chatting, I thought we've got to get you on, Russ, because it's like it's so different because obviously, you know, you and we've to be honest, I think you're probably the furthest fan the other way we've spoken to. 
Yeah. Feet. So we've done a lot of West from, you know, we've done a lot of the American side. But, but, yeah. And it's, and as you said, you know, the other day, um, when we was going to try and do it the other day, but obviously we'd played um, uh, an evening game here. Oh my and it was, God. And it was yeah. like, and it's like in the States, obviously the West Coast guys and stuff like that, they get up early. You know, a 12 o'clock kickoff for you is probably ideal for you guys, isn't it? Because it means, you know, it's like an evening game almost for you. Yeah, well, e- even even the three o'clock one, because at least you're Saturday night, go to the yeah. pub or the yeah. bars and watch the game, have dinner, then put the game on. Um, when it's the one thirty a.m. kickoff here or the four in the morning kickoff here that's the worst because if you win you're buzzing so you don't want to go to bed yeah and if you lose you're just miserable and you don't want to go to bed either <laughs> <laughs> that's the trouble isn't it that's the yeah. trouble West Ham can can ruin your life and obviously for you particularly and anyone sort of outside of london and essex really i think in or anyone in the uk for example as you said it will ruin your next day or your or your previous day based on oh, the time difference so yeah the weekend makes the weekend oh. make or break really exactly but, get... i mean yeah can't complain too much though because at least all the games here are shown every yeah. single one's live um so yeah. that's nice so it's always on it's just whether you can make time for it do you know or what if I... the, miss- the missus allows me to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I'll be honest. I don't think I would get up at 4 30 to watch West Ham. I, I've said it. There we go. I've said it. So I, I respect so, you. I respect everyone who does that because I don't think I could do that, to be honest. So, so I, you're right. There are times when I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be bothered. <laughs> but the last time I didn't do that, we beat Leicester 4 0. Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. The time I did last get up for, we lost to Newcastle 2 0, which was dire. <laughs> And then the time the time I missed it before that was when we beat Chelsea three two, so I was like, right, I'm yeah, yeah it's <laughs> and yeah, that's that makes perfect sense because you know it's true we have to watch every game you do have to watch every game because you don't yeah. know which West Ham's going to turn up each game, and so exactly. uh, yeah, it's really important. But obviously, utmost respect for you guys, anyone outside of you know the UK because I just think it's crazy honestly you, i don't think of it and then i get like, messages from my you know some of the american guys are going oh it's 1 30 here and i've just got up like, oh my god <laughs> like, Fucking hell, fair play yeah oh, particularly like the west coast guys you know the fresno irons they're mental all their family turn up their kids turn oh up god. it's like it's like 4 30 in the morning you know what i mean it's like oh they're having the they've got the bubble machines out oh Fair play yes, I, yeah. I went to university in San Francisco, so I've experienced, and I went to school in England, so I've yeah. I've experienced the normal three pm kickoff. I've experienced early yeah. mornings and the evenings. Um, I can't decide which one I prefer, <laughs> really. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I was in San Francisco, and there wasn't. I don't think there is a San Francisco Hammers, but uh, if there think... is. No, I'm, I'm pretty there sure. Is, is there? No, I think there's there's Hollywood Hammer. I'm trying to think that sort of that West Coast Hollywood Hammers, Fresno Irons. You got um, I can't be. I'm sure someone yeah. of, one of the one of I, the I network. was there and I couldn't find one. Yeah, yeah. But you've you've done some miles, Russ, haven't you? I mean, not yeah, funny. Yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the UK for school, then then college in America, and then uh, and then back to Hong Kong. But uh, no, it's fair play, man. Fair play. And as you said, always wearing West, watching West Ham, and that's why people. I think, and which, uh, and and I think, I mean personally, I don't know whether, I don't know. I just think there's we're such a unique group of group of fans. And as you said, you know, when you went when we went down, and your dad went right, that's it, that's it. We can't watch no football. And then you got the and then the hurt. Then you felt the hurt of being a West Ham right. fan. You've experienced that. You're hardened to that. So you have to. Oh, for sure. Know, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah go on you carry on man. what was you gonna say i was yeah it's you know it's i i'd rather support a team like we do with that family where it's it's either heartbreak or it's full jubilation as opposed yeah. to just middle of the middle of the pack yeah like week in week out it's whatever I, do you know what I, I i mentioned it to someone the other day because there's there's lots of west ham youtube channels and um because there's and, and the reason why there's so many is because there's so much to talk about with West Ham because there's always and it's like I I don't know I don't know how a Southampton YouTuber could survive because you know because there's nothing to say they're sort of oh you know, my God. They're doing all right and they're, they're quite bland we've always got something to talk about and even if we go back to the old days which is what I do 
loads to talk about and i think that's why there's so many youtube fans and particularly now we need it in the in the uk particularly because obviously we're all locked down again so yeah it's back to watching netflix oh for sure yeah you must have gone through that twice over oh. everything well, that, on there. that's why i started this channel russ to be perfectly honest i've had enough of watching you know once you've watched tiger king and <laughs> uh, the other ones i think we watched tiger king in about a day and i was like well that's it that's me done um uh my wife has a fascination with sort of um at the moment it's a lot of australian reality tv shows like oh, yeah. Aust- australian married at first sight and and obviously you must get you guys must get it because you're sort of closer to australia than we are and yeah um, we got it all yeah oh and uh 90 day fiance and st- i can't bear it so that's why i thought <laughs> do you know what uh, i can't bear it so much i'm going to start a youtube channel and so at least every 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 evening i toddle off down to my garage for an hour and she can watch i don't know whatever oh, man, the, the, this the channel saved me as well we've sort of had a semi lockdown in the sense where i our sports institutes closed sure for about yeah, yeah. Four, four months at a time and i on the way to going for a run or whatever it's put hammers 11 yeah. on yeah it's awesome shout. so yeah good 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 there's plenty more to come um and it will need to be for the next four weeks at least. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> yeah, God dear. Oh dear. Day one, day one of lockdown. Anyway, 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 let's talk about your Hammers 11, Russ. So as I said, everyone yeah. we get on the on the channel, we ask them to give their Hammers 11. So um, the only criteria is you have to be alive to have seen them play. That's it. You can talk about whoever you want, whatever formation. It doesn't matter. Um, and okay. so it's nice and simple. Um, right. So let me just make my notes. Uh, Russ, it's, it's going to confuse me because... I put Russ down, and I'm Russ. <laughs> and do you know what? I've got a mate called Russ Webb as well. Oh, really? How weird is that? Yeah. And I'm going to put it on Facebook. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your one on my Facebook personal one, and he'll be freaked out because it'll be so weird. Lovely bloke, Russ Webb. Um, but he's an Everton fan. But anyway, apart from that, we can't, oh. kind, of, kind of everything. But um, yeah. right, okay. Sure. Who Who is in goal for the Web 11? Who's in right, so I've picks? gone with a the theme here. I've gone with nice. being an overseas fan. I've gone with a uh, a non-British eleven, Ooh, just lovely. because. Why not? It made it easy. It made it easier as well. Yeah. Uh, so to kick things off and go, I've gone for probably our most consistent keeper since Rob Green, and I'd say that's Fabianski. I agree. Good shout. So um, he's just pipped Roberto in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I think somehow he's he's come from you know Swansea. And I remember when we signed him, there was a lot of flack, as in he isn't the next level we were promised and whatnot. But he's, I think he's shown his own. Mm. Uh, he kind of showed how instrumental he is to our squad when he went down last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he had a bit, bit of a blip of form recently, but that performance against City recently, mm. he's, he was class, I thought. So yeah, that's, that's me with Lucas. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, you don't realise the impact of... I mean, I didn't realise the impact of a goalkeeper until he wasn't there. You know, the old adage, you don't know what you've got to, it's gone. Um, yeah. It's so true. And, uh, I mean, even when he was at Swansea, he was, you know, player of the year. He was, you know, right. a, a, among the teams of the season type things. And, um, yeah, he's quality, man. Although he's get, yeah, My only concern is he's like... I think we've probably got like another season and a half with him. So the rest of this season, yeah. I think one more season, then you've got to start looking at... Start bringing in some new yeah, players. Yeah, because we're quite old. We've got our goalkeepers on the first team are quite yeah. old with him and David Martin and, you know, and um, and Randolph and, you know, all those type of people. But no, he's quality. And as you said, he he saves us more. You know what I mean? I mean, even that Liverpool game, he did a couple of good games. You know, oh, just a couple of worldies. He's in it for sure. Oh yeah, cut the world. He's he's the man. I love him. Uh, right. Okay. So, uh, so I've gone for I've, I've gone with a three four three here. So I'm going oh, with God, te- I'm I'm going for a very that. A, a very attacking three four three. <laughs> you sort of have to with West Ham. I don't think yeah. I don't think you've ever had a West Ham eleven where they've gone defensive because I just think it sort of um, doesn't work. I don't think. Right. No, no. Okay. So in the three in defence, who's the first one of those three then, Russ? Um, these are current, and I think best centre back we've got at the moment and that's Ogbonna yeah nice shout um again very common in you know a lot of West Ham careers there's a dip of form at some point but it seems to yeah. come back again um yeah. second hammer of the year last year I think if if we didn't have Declan he would have easily been hammer of the year easily yeah um and I think 
the one thing that I think was really cool to see this season that was a change of mentality to most is that game against Leicester when mm. they, Leicester scored and then it got chalked off uh, from VAR and you saw Bonna celebrate like it was a win or celebrate yeah, like yeah. he just scored a goal. I yeah. think that was really, really cool to see. You don't see that often. No, nah, no, you don't. And um, yeah, so I love, I love Angelo. I think he's yeah. class. He's quality. He's quality. And, and that's why I like listening to the games, um, the away games, obviously I'm at the home games, but the away games, I like it with the noise off because I like hearing people who, and, and Oggy is one of the guys who really does shout quite a lot um you can yeah. hear it and i just think he's he, he's he's been sort of the stalwart recently and as you said last season he was brilliant um and you're right he but there does seem to be this sort of defensive toughness now with us now um that i can't remember them being before he's always always seen a bit of a pushover i think um yeah but now we seem to be a bit more you know what i mean a bit tougher and um and he and he epitomizes it because I just think he's he's brilliant. And I think he's uh it's one of those things where you've got there's like three of them, isn't it? There's him, Diop, and Balbuena, and they've all had dips in form, and the other one of those three has sort of jumped the gun. So now Diops is no yeah, exactly. he's, he's not getting back in the team at the moment, you know, no. and he's like because of the way those three, those other two are playing. But um we'll put Oggy in. Okay, who's next then, Russ? Uh next is his old partnership with Reedy. Winston. Yeah, Winston. I know he's English speaking, but technically overseas. I think he came from Denmark, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mich- and he's, Mich- he's a Mich- Kiwi lad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, he was such a consistent performer for us until riddled with injuries, um, yeah. which is such a shame. It seems to, again, be a recurring thing with us, with players we get with quality and, you know, with Dino and whatnot. Um, obviously, still get goosebumps. Um over that goal in the, the last game in the bowling. Yeah. Um, remember watching that and it was it was just you like couldn't write it. It was so cool. Um it was obviously would have been obviously wasn't there, but it would have been awesome to be there, were you there? I imagine you were Yeah, yeah, we were there, yeah. We yeah, were, yeah. We were, yeah, we were there. It was great. Yeah, and, it, and, and, dreams, really. it is, and he's done sort of the he's done sort of the the hat trick I call it. So he's obviously scored against Tottenham, scored against Millwall, and then he scored the last goal at the bowling. So yeah, he's um he, and he's he's doing yeah, he's playing well at Sporting Kansas at the moment. So who knows? Yeah, he, yeah. he could be back. So it'd be great if he would be. So I think and you can't great. you can't forget his turn against was it Sunderland? Yeah. Outside the box. It's like stadium. It's like with defenders. It's like it's a bit like in 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 sort of um putting it in a in a rugby context. It's like, you know, um, you know when like a prop does a little like you know behind the back pass or so just to show yeah. them they, they they can do it but they don't want to do it all the time and that's like with yeah. defenders they just do a little bit of i remember i remember um anton ferdinand scored an absolute worldie against uh fulham, fulham right and, it, and it's the same thing it's like oh yeah okay it's in my locker it's in my locker yeah exactly yeah <laughs> or one of the little i love that i love the guys used to do the little behind the back passes with their feet with their hand but in rugby yeah yeah yeah, yeah no, exactly um right we'll put reedy in uh and who's the last of the three then mate um so this one bloke he won't be doing any worldy goals and that's thomas repka ah good old i thomas know Repke. he's predominantly a right black a right back but i think slotted him at center back at some point yeah yeah, yeah definitely he, yeah 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 absolute nutter but yeah. adore him you know we seem to adore those types of players at west ham um type of player who i think as we've spoken about we've been lacking in the back for a yeah. while now it's true um but you something that he he knew what it was he knew what being a west ham player was about which mm. i loved you could see that against the last game against fulham when i think that was his last game wasn't it against fulham yeah. with him crying um he reminded me of uh have you seen jason statham in mean machine Monk. <laughs> yes an great, absolute yeah. loose absolute loose cannon <laughs> yeah that's, that's a great that's a great analogy that's a great analogy but he is he is he was like that that's why we loved him wasn't it because you know and again i i don't know just because we're just because you know because you're obviously the rugby connection you get players like that in, in the rugby as well who oh and yeah you know, and you know they're gonna go and you just have to hold their shirt back and say no just not not this time mate not this time you know and it's like you know but no he was brilliant and he just yeah lovely bloke and yeah, as you said, he, he, he said that last game when he was crying off the pitch. And again, it's like just a crazy thing that he does. And he's just like, no, I just think he's brilliant. Love I can't, him. I'd love I can't to imagine get him training with him. Oh, 
can write, like, it's, when it's, it's been some there's been some funny funny stories of of play, of fans who have interacted with him and yeah they're just as crazy as you would imagine they would be because he's just like a just a complete nutter um yeah but he's on, i mean he, he's on, my he's on, distancing with him yeah yeah i would yeah yeah <laughs> We, we've communicated on Instagram about coming on the show, but he doesn't. He's he reckons his English isn't good enough, so which is a shame. But I, again, I think that's a fair distance. I think he's in the Czech Czech Republic at the moment, so I, that's enough for me to interview him. <laughs> yeah. if we did, just because I'd be really scared. <laughs> um, to be perfectly honest with him. Um, right, let's go into the four in midfield. Who's uh, let's go yeah, on to no, the left. Who's on the left of the uh, four? Yeah, okay. on the left for me, it's a no-brainer. Um, the only bloke to ever have broken my heart, Dimitri Payet. Yeah. <laughs> um best player I've ever seen in a West Ham yeah. shirt. Um he was the catalyst to everything good in our final season. Um obviously I was alive for Palo de Cano, but as I said before, all I got to see was like little snippets of highlights yeah. Yeah, of being course. in Hong Kong. So I didn't feel like I could have put Paolo in my team. But um yeah, never in a million years would I find myself supporting France in the Euros no, as well yeah, as England, no, yeah. of course, right? And like seeing Billet celebrate Payet's goal against Romania, oh, it was Crazy, so cool man. to see. It was like a proud dad, wasn't he? Really, like on the touchline, yeah. that's what it was like. And no, he was a fa- phenomenal player. As you said, he was. I mean, he says me, he, he's he's technically the best player I've ever seen up to, at London, at London Stadium and Upton Park, you know, for West Ham. But um, he. He just got you excited. He's a maverick. He he played, you know, he's just and he wasn't like particularly quick. He was quite a stumpy little bloke, really, but he just had this amazing talent. And I think, and I've said it before, I, I'm I'm afraid to say I don't think we're ever gonna get a Ballon d'Or nominee play for West Ham again, you know. It, during his time you know obviously yeah we might get someone who was a ballon d'or nominee and then came comes to us when he's like 37 38 for his retirement years but um no it's a shame but uh he was quality and he made that last season what it was wasn't it and so um and so i mean basically defied physics with a free kick against palace yeah i remember watching that and i was i had to like double check to make sure that actually went in yeah oh awesome and and he sort of redefined it's like obviously when cristiano ronaldo he had the, he started in a knuckleball didn't he where it sort of did that weird sort of flip and di canio and di canio and Payet did this sort of new it was a new way of taking three kicks it was just like this real loopy thing which but a really quick loop do you know what i mean it was just really strange how it sort of it's sort of redefined the three kicks but uh no it was he was absolutely when he quality. scored he always knew when he would score one because he'd run off before it went in the goal he's yeah even that Palace one, he knew it was going in before it was like, and I don't think the goalkeeper knew it was going in, which is uh, mental. And uh, But again, it's like having a free kick 20, 25 yards out. It was like a penalty for us during that season because it was almost like you knew it was, if it wasn't going in, it was going to be on target. And um, that doesn't happen very often with us on three kicks, particularly in the modern day. Um, right. Okay, Russ, let's go. Let's go to the right of that four. Who's on the right of that four? Stay with us long. I wish he stayed longer. Had an absolute engine, and that's Yossi Benayoun. Oh, lovely. 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 Top bloke. The pitch in the FA Cup final, I thought, personally. Yep. Um, for us, at least. Don't want to talk about <laughs> um, He had a motor like no other. Like, he, he honestly, it was, I think it was like the 118th minute still, and he was sprinting for the ball. Uh, uh, some of the stuff he did, his assists, some of his scored some terrific goals to Fulham. He did against Fulham this weekend. Mm. Uh, he was very uh, like Lanzini when he arrived because he was he was like, where did he come from? The yeah. same way Lanzini when Lanzini first came, we were like, sure. who's this? Who's this lad? Um, he's in there. He's got to be class if he's then gone on to play for Liverpool, Chelsea, and Arsenal, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah he was i think he was the first he's the first player to score a hat trick in the champions league the premier league i think it's the fa cup and the league cup or something like that it's awesome yeah that says it yeah and he always absolutely. looked deprived of food he was he was yeah tiny. <laughs> yeah really skinny <laughs> but apparently he loved a bit he loved the tackle he loved getting involved in the in the physical side in training apparently as well that's when people we speak spoken to who have been playing during that same era as, as yossi but no top guy top top guy um right payet and ben ayun oh, oh, 
Right, let's go into the middle. Who's the first one of, of your middle two then, mate? One of the back three. Um, honors day, world beater. Um, unfortunately, didn't wasn't with him. And that's Alex Song. Oh, that's a great shout. That's a great shout. Alex Song. I've got to type that's, that in. <laughs> He's brilliant. Absolute he, class. He was just so, so good for us. At least, so anyway, I think we, we nearly hit, I think we hit top four that Christmas, or we were near about at the start. Um, but yeah, his movement, his passing, um, you know, he, he pulled the strings basically. And when he took command of a game, I thought when he like wanted to take <laughs> take command <laughs> of a game and wanted to control that game, I thought we, we, we'd win it, we won. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, he couldn't do that. But yeah, I, I I thought he was class when he was with he us was. for that first year. Yeah, I remember because when we I remember we announced we announced he was going to be signing, um, but we kept it quiet. And so I turned up to the game, and we were told you know he's signing and we're going to get him on the pitch, but not to tell anyone else to make a big thing out of it, um, which was quite fun. It was quite fun to be honest. Um, but he was brilliant, wasn't he? He was just class. I think he's been, he's one of the classiest midfielders we've had in the modern era because he just was, as you said, he had everything. Um, and he and Payet, when they were on it, they were just, they were beautiful together, you know. And um, no, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, that wasn't Payet. Sorry, I was getting confused. But um, he was absolutely brilliant. I, I loved him. I, you know, and it was a shame because I think he could have, as you said, he wasn't here for long for periods for us. And it would have been nice to have him and build a team around him. Do you know what I mean? He, he's the type of player you could build a team around him. But unfortunately, he just gets injured all the time, didn't he? Yes, I mean, that's what stunted his Arsenal career as well. Um, but, you know, he was good. And a very stylish man. Always well turned out. I like a player that's well turned. By out. the end of the screw is what with his Edgar, Edgar Davids glasses as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well. <laughs> Just looked cool. Just looked cool. I like. Yeah, he was a cool looking player. Right. Okay. Alex Song is in. Who is the next one in that midfield um, two? Then, uh, then Russ. Sort of the the cam roll centre attack midfielder. It's uh, the one and only Alessandro Diamante. Oh, Diamante. There's some names coming out today. Let me I find him. One, one season wonder for us, but he's a bit of a cult hero. I, I loved him. Yeah, I think it was he was he lacked a bit of quality, and I think we were in a bit of a relegation scrap. And there was this lad I'd never heard of him when he came from Italy, um, and he was just so Italian, and just we needed a player to like run for the ball we needed a player who's gonna get in that relegation scrap for us and he just sort of did his own thing but it worked yeah and he had the crazy Scored. hair as well the crazy oh. hair as well yeah and i was like oh looking for him and he'd shaved it all off <laughs> <laughs> but that was him that was him but he was a, a nutter and as you said we needed one of them uh we needed we, we always cling to an italian very after di canio don't we and so and he was like our di canio mark ii really because he was crazy and flamboyant and liked to free kick as well um and just scary he was still scary he was a scary looking player you know yeah, he was <laughs> but he was just exciting he was like a maverick right and you know yeah. i think we seem to we like those maverick players like the payettes the di canios the mm -hmm. diamantes um just had so much flair scored some great goals as well Again, I think he even said he wish he stayed longer. Hmm. Um, so yeah, honestly, I think I think he came second in Hammer of the Year behind Scott Parker. Yeah, um, just yeah, you. big fan. Yeah, good man. Right, okay, we'll put Diamante in. Right, so we've got the front three now. Um, you go for the front three as you got it written down. Yeah. Russ. So I've got my right forward. Um, crucial for us getting back into the Premier League, and that's Vaz Tay. Ricardo Vazte. There's some, there's some great names coming up today. I think that's the first time Vazte's come up, unbelievably. Do you, can you understand Really? That? Yeah, it's crazy. But I have to, I mean, I'm going to have to type oh, him in. He, he brought me so much joy in that one year. I think he, he, I think he's really underrated. He scored 12, like 12 goals in 18 games that season. I looked it up the other day. Um, did exactly what we asked of him, really. Um, he, and that was yeah. to fire us back into the Premier League. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think he obviously obviously scored the goal which took us up, you know, and uh, and as you said, he came in and did a great job for us. Um, he was obviously bagging him for Barnsley at the time and, and carried on. And uh, yeah, I just thought he was a breath of fresh air, wasn't he? Because it was like, yeah. you know, that, that championship team was quite workmanlike. You had like your Matty Taylors, your Kevin Nolans, you know, Mark, you had Colton, you had Jack, you had quite sort of British workman. He came yeah. and he was just a bit of flair and it was a right amount of flair you needed to get back into the Premier League, definitely. And Yeah, uh, exactly. No, quality. Yeah, it's a great shout, Russ. That's a great shout. Right, okay. I don't, Vass- I don't, cool. Yeah, I don't think he quite cut it out for the Prem. No. I think he wasn't that quite at that level, but he did score for me beat Spurs 3-0, so can't exactly. complain. <laughs> exactly. So he's a cult here already because he beat his Yeah, scored. exactly. Right, okay. Vass is in. Um, who is next, mate? Um, Carlos, King Carlos, mm. Carlos Tevis, me when we signed him, I'd like thought it was a gag. And my dad told me, <laughs> I was like, I know, I know we haven't come on, and yeah, I mean, it took him some time to settle in. I looked it up, mm. he like, he, I think, recorded one assist in the first 19 games, yeah. and you're like, right, he's gone from me, he, he all of a sudden he went from a flop to world beater for us. and was it seven and four assists in the last 10? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, very close to my heart. Well, I mean, he was he was basically, as you said, yeah, you're right. He didn't really turn up for the first half a season, to be fair. He was doing too much, really. Um, yeah. And I remember Curbs coming in and just telling him to just stay up front. And that was the making of him really at West Ham. And I remember then he was getting so close to scoring. He sort of like missed, he hit the post or it just go yeah. wide. And, and then obviously he scored that goal against Tottenham. And then he just like, then this little monster just was unleashed on the premier league. And for someone who, who played not a lot of games for us, the impact he made um, was phenomenal. Um, you know, it was yeah. disproportionate to the amount of games he played, but I- uh, yeah, he's one of the players where I'm, I'm so thankful there wasn't like Twitter or social media mm. um, when we when he was playing for us because at on match day, even though he wasn't scoring, you could see he was working hard yeah. and people applauded him for that. So I think it didn't get to him that much. But could you imagine if he, was, if he logged on Twitter and whatnot? Oh, oh, he'd probably get pelted. Yeah. But so, I mean, and, and also, I mean, you know, I don't I think I've ever seen a fa- uh, a returning player from an, from obviously playing for a new club getting such an ovation as Carlos did when he came back yeah. from Man United and and even like Man City and then when he came back for um the Argentina game we played at Upton Park and he came on the pitch um incredible incredible player and uh, a lovely guy and obviously we've spoken to lots of players who were around during that time and that, you know the same as you disbelief you know when i said to i know john pantsill for example john what happened <laughs> who i who i know is hasn't made this team you know unbelievable unbelievable i know saying. i know yeah well, he must be on the bench um so so he, he i said yeah what happened you know when you sort of turn up for training and there's carlos tevez and javier mascherano and he went i just didn't believe it i just didn't believe it he's like you know i could because we were the same none of us believed it did we i was getting pats yeah. on the back and stuff by my boss and stuff like well done you know it's like yep thank you <laughs> i i was i was instrumental in that negotiation and bless them when they had that that sort of that infamous picture of pardew at, at upton park yeah and they're like eyes are squinting like they've just been sort of like i i have envisaged it almost being that they were bundled into a car in buenos aires and sort of <laughs> taken out and they're like where are we? Where, where? Chadwell, <laughs> Chadwell Heath. I think it's a Chadwell Heath. What's it? Where is this Chadwell Heath? But bless them, they, you know, and, and Carlos really got involved with the team spirit. And Anton tells a story of when he was, um, when he was, he, he's, he's bringing his interpreter everywhere, Carlos, even a nightclub in London on the dance floor. He's got his interpreter. Really? Just, yeah, mental. Absolute mental well, guy. Just wanted to be with the lads, right? Yeah, just wanted to be with the lads and, and, and get involved. But he wouldn't yeah. learn English. I mean, Maserano apparently he learned English, but Taylor's uh, Carlitos didn't want to learn English, but he just wanted to still be involved. Fair, right, enough. fair enough. Fair enough, Carlos. Right. Okay. So who is the last in this very, very attacking team, Russ? Yeah. Uh cap it off is the infamous Marco Anatovic. Oh, I like that. Um, once a bastard, always a bastard. But uh, our bastard. He's Ali. <laughs> it's not as glorious when he isn't, but when he is our bastard, 
we bloody love him. Um, absolute defender's nightmare. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he had that. He had that swagger, arrogance about him, which, again, similar to you know when you play rugby, he's sort of a guy you want in your team. Yeah, yeah. When he's not on your team, he's like you're like, oh, it's just such a tosser. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, and he just he just moans at the referee all the time. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. He's and but he's oh, and, sort of, and that sort of maverick player who could just do like a mazy run and just you know it just yeah I know what you mean just or do something yeah, crazy you know. But it'd be brilliant. yeah, I, I remember. I think it was against Burnley specifically, like scoring against. He had a tussle with Tarkowski earlier. Yeah, and he scored and just went up to his face and started laughing after he scored. Yeah, like that's the sort of behaviour that you got with Arnie and came to bite us in the end. But I thought, well, you know, he transformed by Moyes. Yeah, um, well, he, he does. He, Moyes and and and, I, and I've, as I said, I've coined this phrase, and it's it's Moyesification, and 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 that's what he does. He Moyesifies. That's the verb to Moyesify. Yeah. Um, players he, he's he's done it he did it with arnie he's doing it with, with antonio he's done it with yeah. four nows he's done it with um uh, uh, masuaku and arnie was one of those players you know when he was playing you know i was really excited when he came first you know 20 odd million pounds billich you know signing put him on the right where he sort of played sort of kind of for stoke and he just wasn't interested he just wasn't the no. player and then moyes threw him up front made him the main man and it just, as you said, turned his bastard rating up to eleven, wasn't it? Yeah. So he was like, he was like even more arrogant and confident because he was the main man. And just go up he was, and piss everyone off. He was so quick, but he had no backlift on his legs. And his, his his legs, his body was completely oh, yeah. straight. You know, it's so bizarre. But he just worked, and he was just tough to get off the ball. And when he was when he was on it, he was on it. Do you know what I mean? When he was on, you know, as you said, he some games he might not fancy it, and he might be a bit tetuous and. Yeah, yeah, but in some games when he a bit between his teeth, he was so that, that comes with that maverick temperament, yeah. doesn't it? Which is what we like. We are, so. that's, as you said, that's why you have to watch West Ham because you don't know what Arnie's going to turn up. Um, in the same way, you didn't know what you know in my day, what what Decanio was going to turn up, whether it was going right. to be the perpetuous toddler throwing his toys out the pram, or whether it was going to be the <laughs> absolute world beating, you know, football player and. Uh, no, it's all good. No, Arnie, that's, that's a good shout. I like that. There's some yeah, great so, shouts in here, Russ, I must say, man. Cheers. So, yeah, it's yeah. my Hammers 11 either gets trounced 4 0 and four men sent off, or we do a Ryan and win 11 3 or something like that. <laughs> well, whatever happens, you'll be first the match of the day, Russ. That's the main thing, which is good for you because obviously then you can go back and uh, you'd have to, you can just watch it, then go back to bed afterwards. Exactly, so, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> and uh, at least the presenter will have something interesting to say each, before each game. Exactly. You might want to watch this if you want to see 11 goals scored by an out of it. <laughs> Cheers, boss. Um, Russ, man, it's been lovely chatting to you. Really, really appreciate your time, mate. It's been brilliant. Thank you, yeah. It. Oh, so it's... cool having on being on there, yeah. Cool, no, it's great. And then you can listen to yourself next time you're training now um, in a few days' time. There you go. That'd be a bit weird, but yeah, you can do that. You go... <laughs> What did I say? Why did I say that? Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, why didn't I pick John Pants with my team? No. Um. So yeah, uh, no, it's been great. Uh, no, obviously, thank you, and thanks to everyone for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, give it a like, give it a share. And from me and Russ, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Come in your wines, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye, bye.